Are you a thoughtful leader? Maybe you are. Maybe you think you are. Let's find out. I'm Mindy Gibbons Klein. I'm author of The Thoughtful Leader and host of The Thoughtful Leader podcast. Thoughtful leadership is all about thought leadership that goes above and beyond. Thought leadership that is truly new and original, exciting, disruptive, maybe even groundbreaking. Because let's face it, we need to raise the bar. My guests and I are absolutely obsessed with finding truly original thought leadership. And I'm going to bring you so many exciting ideas and opportunities, things for you to think about and chances for you to push your thinking that you'll be very glad you tuned in. So thanks so much for checking out Thoughtful Leadership and the Thoughtful Leader podcast. I look forward to connecting with you very, very soon. Welcome to the show. My guest today is the amazing thoughtful leader, Sylvia Del Corso. I've been waiting a long time to get her on the show. Wait till you hear about her and what she's been up to in the world. Hello, Sylvia. Hi, Mindy. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really an honor and a pleasure. You are phenomenal at what you do. And before we launch into anything more personal, just share with everybody what your business is all about and why you set it up. I'm the director of an SEO agency. We only take care of search engine optimization aspects of the digital marketing, and we're based in West London. Right. (laughs) Search engine optimization. There's lots and lots of lots of companies doing that. What's your particular philosophy about well, searches and being found online? Well, it's something that nowadays should be a priority. So we can't really concede to have a website that is not meant to support the users uh, and being found as well as could be. It kind of defies the purpose of having it. It's like having an amazing holiday home and never using it really. So we need to make good use of the investment that we've done creating our beautiful website. And yes, there is plenty of companies doing it. What we do as a unique difference is that we only focus on this. So you don't find us as a general agency doing a little bit of digital marketing, social media, email marketing, paid ads, and social media and SEO, we only do this. So all of the people that we have in the team is meant to only focus on this and it helps us going very plaza focused uh, into each of the different issues. Yeah, also doing it from a holistic point of view. So not uh, the quick fix and the daily email that managed to skip our spam filter and we receive uh, promising us tomorrow you'll be on the first page of Google. Uh, We look holistically at what the search intent is, how you can help your user experience. Uh, So it's doing it for the search engines, but doing it for the users first. Yeah, and it fits right into the thoughtful leader philosophy because, you know, it's not just throwing time or money or effort at something. It's doing it strategically. It's having that long-term view. It's, you know, have you ever had to adjust the way you look at it, the angle or something that's not working and consider a different approach, either for your sites or the client's? Yeah, it's something that we do all the time. One thing they really like in SEO is that it's measurable. Uh, So whatever you do, whatever choice you do, it happens because you have numbers. So you're looking at uh, figures and then you take decisions. Uh, And if you do something, you need to have a measurable proof uh, of that. Uh, And then you decide if it was the good route or if there is something that you need to change so it's a constant circle of improvement the kaizen uh, japanese term that is constantly reviewing uh, doing analyzing reviewing it's a nagai type of cycle yes so the analyzing reviewing taking action that that whole circle is a is a thoughtful leadership circle <laughs> we'll claim that for ourselves as well but what's fun i think is when you see the results and you know you were part of something, it's not always 
easy, is it? Uh, tell us about some challenges, if you will, that you've had with the business, anything you'd like to tell our listeners. Well, SEO in itself does take time. So one thing that we do is to educate the customers that it's not a quick fix. Uh, it's something that we need to do and then monitor how it improves over time. Uh, and there's a lot of disinformation. Many clients, when we start working with them, they've been burnt before. So there is a lot of empathy and trying to get them to understand uh, that it is a process that actually works. So just lost uh, a little bit of trust in the industry. So the mission is making small business owners aware that it is something that does work. And I've been doing this for 10 years now. As you can hear from my accent, I wasn't originally born here. We used to have an agency in Italy. And I've seen how it changed uh, all through the time with the different changes in the algorithm. But it still does work. It is something that uh, regardless where you're based, uh, where your customers are based, it's a transferable skill. You can move uh, and keep on doing this uh, job, uh, which is what I did, basically. So you can move from a country and keep on running a similar type of business because website business owners would still need uh, that type of support. Definitely. Thank you for sharing about your move. And I never like to comment on accents, but yes, when people can hear something, they're wondering, they're wondering. I get the same all the time, you know, and at some point people just can't hold back anymore and they go, where are you from? <laughs> and the same happens to you, does it? <laughs> Yeah, well, the second thing that everybody asks me, the first is, where are you from? And I say, I'm from Italy. And then everybody asks me, why did you leave Italy then? <laughs> because we used to live on Tos in Tuscany, lovely little seaside village, which is amazing. It's like the dream place if you're on a holiday, if you're running your business, if you're trying to make ends meet and give a future to the kids and so on. It becomes challenging. So we resisted a lot. Uh, we knew that it was tough, but we resisted a lot, hoping that we may make it work. And then in the end, we kind of gave up uh, and moved, which is something that I never regretted. I should have done it earlier before because I love being here, love being in London. It's a, and it's helped so much the business. I mean, the way things work here is that they really work uh, and businesses can thrive. They've got a lot of support from other businesses. Uh, there is much more collaboration over competition. It's something that I wish there it was existing even back there. And it's not, unfortunately, because of all the scarcity situations and so on. But here I see how things work and I see how much more of a perspective for the future I'm giving to the kids, how many more opportunities, whatever they want to do, they can do it. Uh, they just have to have a dream and commit to it. Uh, back there, you were limited to what you could find. Uh, so you can have dreams, but then if you can't find the place of your dreams, you kind have to go with what you find. Uh, and instead, I wanted to give them a wealth of choices for their future. Wow. Well, we're not here to compare cultures. However, <laughs> I think the listeners would be very interested to hear how it was moving here 10 years, no, more than 10 years ago, you know, coming to a brand new country, speaking a different language every day. It's not always smooth sailing. The thoughtful leader recognizes that they're going to have to put more thought and more effort into things. But for you, it, it must have been especially challenging. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, everybody told us it was brave. I don't really think it's so brave to jump out of a building when the building is on fire. It's kind of a necessity. So if you're struggling where you are, if you can't make ends meet, then you have to take a brave decision, even if it's not that brave. It's just survival. It's just doing something for a bigger purpose. So the thought was that we were going to do it for them, for the kids. And they've been grateful, which is something that's really so heartwarming. They tell us, thank you for doing this. So yeah, now they're 13, nearly 14 and 10. So they recognize things. Uh, and actually the move 
when we did it, uh, it was 2016. It wasn't 10 years ago. It wasn't five. Uh, and it was just uh, after the Brexit was signed. So we knew that we were going to move and there may be challenges, but we were decided to do it anyway. So it's been a great change, but it's not been painless. Uh, but everybody's got a different approach. For me, I'm very used to my routines. I'm very used to my things. All the places that I know, the people that I know, it gives me safety, security. And then out of a sudden, everything was new. You kind of wipe completely the board the slate clean. Uh, you don't have a friend. You don't have an acquaintance. You have to change everything from your GP to your pharmacy to the school of the kids, everything. And you don't know how. You don't know how it works. So I was really struggling with panicking, literally. I was looking at my day in time, chunks of 10 minutes at a time, saying, okay, now I'm focusing on what I'm doing the next 10 minutes. Now I'm focusing on what I'm doing the next. That was digestible. So I, I could make through that. And now if I look back, it seems like it was centuries ago, but when you are in it, uh, it just doesn't seem possible to get out. You've been extremely successful. You keep a sense of humor. That, that's the most important thing because, you know, these challenges, well, they're constant. I mean, over the past couple of years in the pandemic, many people had to experience something that they never thought they would. So many challenges, so many restrictions, uh, so much uncertainty and fear and loss and grief. And, you know, I could go on. We're not really here to talk about that. But, you know, you've survived that personally and with your family and with your business. But tell us where you had to be a bit more thoughtful over the past couple of years, especially. Well, it's been a change in me more than anything, the way I was approaching things, because I was kind of expecting everything to go as predicted. And I had to learn how to be flexible. So resilience, but also flexibility. So you can't uh, really know what's going to happen. You need to deal with uncertainties. Yes, there are going to be uncertainties. That's the only certainty that we have. And you have to kind of go with the flow. So having my goals, my personal values as North Star, my compass, and trying to find my way around, even when I was rebuilding the business, becoming an entrepreneur here, everything seemed challenging. But even just thinking of how would I do it for the purpose of uh, being an ethical business, trying to run things from in a certain way. So it's kind of giving me the direction, even if everything is always changing. Yeah, I mean, the, I think many of us realize that we can't control everything and we can control certain things, like you say, you know, being resilient, being flexible. That's my key word for this year, flexibility. Honestly, the, there's no more important skill, I think, in these changing uncertain times. So as a thoughtful leader, we've been invited onto the show as a thoughtful leader. What's your big thought or idea around websites and business websites in particular. Where do you think things need to go? Get right back to your business. But back to my business, what I can see is that it's less uh, of a trying to appease search engines with manipulative techniques. Uh, there still are some of these practices, but they don't really pay in the long term. Uh, so there are way, lots of shortcut ways, buying backlinks in bulk, uh, buying, which is more or less like when you're buying followers. Uh, it's a temporary fix that's completely manipulative. And in the end, it doesn't really get you anywhere. If you do it, uh, thinking of the user experience, thinking of how can I make my users happy? Making the users happy is the best type of content strategy that you can have. Uh, so you think of what are their needs? When we used to have meetings in person, now we're restarting, but we had a lot of online things. But when we used to have meetings in person, generally we do this kind of game. We were swapping chairs. Uh, so I was asking the person I was speaking with to swap chairs with me and put themselves physically in the idea that you are your user, your website user, 
what do you think? What do you search for? Because people will always think from their educated mindset. So lots of big, difficult terms. They know things very well. The user is not uh, generally. Generally, whatever you sell, products or services, you are talking to a customer who knows way less than you do and you need to speak their language. Uh, we often have a lot of assumptions of what they may be searching for. And then when we look at data, actually they're not uh, because they may be using inappropriate terms. But that's the way they are. They are still need to be educated. You need to find them for what they search for. So thinking of the user is always the first recommendation I'd give. That word assumptions that just reminded me of that. Never assume you make an ass out of you and me. Um, most of our listeners have probably heard that. If not, just write the word assume and break it up into three pieces. So, but we always have to make assumptions. No, we don't have to, but we t always tend to make assumptions. How else can people recognize when they're making assumptions? What have you found over the years? That is something that happens even to myself in person, in person and I'm working on that a lot, uh, is finding proof because we always have all of these thoughts, uh, even if not websites related, uh, we always have all of these uh, assumptions, again, this internal voice. If you start searching for proof, then everything gets back from a very subjective uh, thing into something that's subjective and measurable. And it's got a complete, generally completely different shape. Because when I start thinking of all the possible issues, and then I think, okay, but what are the proofs uh, that I have? How has it been so far in the past? Uh, well, actually, in the past, I got solid proof that things were different. So I don't have to over worry that much and all that anxiety and all of that. If you search for proof, then you start from a different basis. Generally, it's smaller and more measurable than just the universe of thoughts. <laughs> yeah. And that is something that requires intention and time. And, you know, what we do around here is carve out time to think about the big issues and, and not just do that top level thinking. Sometimes you really, really need to stop to take a step away look at everything differently. I think the word proof is uh, very powerful. It's part of our title of the episode now. <laughs> so we're having um, fun searching for proof. And I guess sometimes it's not so much fun if you realize that you've been searching in the wrong place or have you ever had that experience where you thought you were going down the right track and, and then you just realized, actually, no, I need a completely different, like 180 degree turnaround. Well, with work, it happens very often because when you look into the proof of things, then you may find, for example, that some of the words that you assumed uh, that people were using, actually, they were used for a completely different type of meaning. So you need to be found for the right reasons. Uh, otherwise, getting traffic is just a vanity figure. And a lot of users, okay, are they engaged? Uh, are they converting? Is this good traffic? Uh, so you need to make sure that you're going down the right uh, sort of sort of route because the being found for the wrong reasons uh, is not getting you anywhere. It's not getting you more profit uh, or more brand awareness or people to like you more on your business perspective. And also a continuous improvement. Uh, so it's not something that you do once uh, and then you let it be. We want to have like, two main elements, it's proof, but also it's continuous improvement because even just uh, trying to find proof is something that you keep to remind yourself all the time. Uh, so it doesn't just, uh, at least for me, it doesn't just happen automatically. I tend to end up falling into my patterns all the time. And then I have to mind, be mindful and conscious and recognize uh, what's happening and say, no, wait, stop. I have to really carefully evaluate. Well, this is a perfect example, listeners. I hope you will look up Sylvia. All of her details are in the show notes and do connect with her. There's a lot more wisdom where that comes from, but we're nearly, nearly at the end of this episode. And I will just give you the chance, Sylvia, to share one 
gem or piece of advice or something that you hope the listeners will do? What would that be? Well, the thing that I would say is know your users uh, very, very well. So just don't think uh, from your perspective, try to think uh, in your mind of this swapping chairs game. So think if you were them, uh, what would be your motivator? What would be the prompt uh, that makes them decide, I need you, I need that? It may not be what you think. They may have more basic, very basic type of needs than what your very educated point is. Uh, so you need to find them where they are, for what they search for. And uh, they generally have, we always generally have some needs that need to be met. Uh, and when we start facing something, generally they're on a more basilar level than what we think. You are absolutely right. And it's the same thing with the work that we do with the thought leadership strategy, with putting together books, never assume. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today, Sylvia. I really love what you're up to. I like the clarity. I'm sure everybody has enjoyed listening to you and hopefully has had some uh, extra ideas to be thoughtful about SEO. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's a lovely, lovely program you have, Mindy. Thank you for having me here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Thoughtful Leader, and I hope it's inspired you to be more thoughtful as a leader in your business. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. An important question for you. Do you want to create a culture of thought leadership in your organization? My best-selling book, The Thoughtful Leader, is available now on Amazon and many other sites in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats. Please visit www.mindygk.com for more great content. That's www.mindygk.com. Speak to you again soon.